This is a photo I took on film in 2017, but something is completely missing from this particular scan. And it's an entire mountain, or volcano if you want to be technical. To explain a little bit further, I recently was going through this roll of Fujifilm Acros that I shot in Japan, and I stopped on this particular image which I had initially disregarded when first seeing it. And when seeing it again later, I wondered why I even took the photo and uh, I thought wasn't Mount Fuji or something meant to be visible in the background since that's the region that I remember taking the photo from during a train ride. And uh, initially I might have thought that since I pushed that roll of Acros two stops to 400 that there just wasn't enough dynamic range and that's why all the photos were contrasty and had crushed detail. I even tried pulling the highlights in Lightroom to no avail. But I've learned a lot after getting into DIY scanning and such. So I found the negative and rescanned it to find that lo and behold, Mount Fuji was completely visible along with the few extra clouds that weren't in the original low res lab scan. And that's why I decided to make this video just as a little reminder to you of the difference that a good film scan can make to your film photography. I've shown this before with examples such as this shot taken on 35 mil hectare, which went from also being a throwaway shot to one of my favorites from that particular role. I've mostly experienced this with low res lab scans, but it can also happen with scans that you may have done yourself maybe a long time ago before perhaps learning the way to optimize the results through your process or equipment. And I've certainly experienced that myself when going back on old scans that I've done when I first got into doing that. So with this particular shot of the Japanese countryside landscape, sure it's not the best image I've taken, but what was missing from my first version of the image was integral to what I valued about this moment. It was the region we were traveling to on a memorable holiday, showing Sarah taking a photo with her phone in the foreground. And to me, this represents our awe and amazement at seeing Mount Fuji for maybe the first time, or maybe just from this viewpoint. The most important part of the image in this case was that iconic shape and outline of Fuji that I had seen so many times in countless artworks, including an exhibition of Hokusai's famous woodblock work on the 36 views of Fujisan. A rescan can take an image from being lower quality with less detail to a version that you might deem much more acceptable. Many times I've been amazed at how much tonal range is actually available in a film negative. This is another example of a low res lab scan that simply looks crushed and lacking detail, no matter how much I play with the sliders. Therefore, taking away from the focus of the image having been the peaceful countryside getaway moment and the lack of detail with Sarah too obscured behind the window because of the shadows and the natural environment outside the hut is largely blown out. Now, I haven't yet been able to find this particular roll of negatives, unfortunately, which brings me to the next point, And it's an important point that I have for you in this video, and that is to keep your negatives. For the most part, I have most of mine somewhat organized, but still have a way to go with many rolls still loose or uncut and unlabeled, perhaps even a few that I've somehow lost. Since around 2019, I've started to consistently archive most roles in these best file style binders and print file archival sleeves. I would recommend that you do something similar or the same if you think you'll ever want to access your negatives years down the track. After all, the archival nature of film is one of the best benefits of shooting it. So maybe it's worth reconsidering some of those old shots you may have seen only in the form of a bad scan and rescanning them to see what potential they might have. Sometimes you don't even need much and it's simply a matter of the lab tech taking a little bit more care with the settings or just not leaving things to the discretion of the scanner's auto judgment settings, which can be way off. If you're into DIY film scanning at home, then all the better, meaning you can reach into your archive at any time and rescan old negs. These examples shown in this video were all done on my Canon 5D Mark IV with the 100mm macro lens and LED light and the film held in the essential film holder, which by the way has recently become cheaper with a self assembly version, bringing it down from 90 pounds to 65 pounds shipped worldwide. And you only need about five minutes to put it together yourself. I do have an affiliate link to this and other key stuff that I use for scanning film at home in the video description below. But of course, do your own research and spend as little or as much as you like if you're building your own scanning setup, whether it's a dedicated scanner or a DIY camera rig. I can definitely say it's been a game changer for me when I started scanning my own film. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you'd like more info or tutorials on this topic, check out the entire playlist I have on film scanning. I hope that you also managed to give new life to some old images that you've shot on film. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.